Twenty seconds later. Okay, <laughs> that's good then. <laughs> so, um, thank you for coming. So. <laughs> So he's he's the program for these 45 minutes. Uh, so I'm I'm a Debian developer since 2010. I've always been interested in uh, hosting s uh, solutions. I created a bunch of mine. Uh, I have a hosting business. So I'm a French guy living in China. I've been doing the packaging of OpenStack since uh, the beginning. So with Folsom. So Folsom was the f uh, A, B, C, D, <coughs> fifth release. Now it's growing and growing, so I manage more than 150 packages. Uh, most of the Python dependencies that are packaged are imported in Ubuntu. And I'm one of the lucky few who are paid to do packaging work in Debian, so I'm very happy of, of what I do. Um, so, okay, let's start about... Um, about an update on OpenStack. So I made two talks on the last DebConf, so I won't repeat myself. Uh, if you want to understand what OpenStack is for, you can have a look in the archive and, and watch the videos. Uh, today I just want to give you a, a quick update on what, what are the new features in, in, in OpenStack. So the first bad news is that I've packaged uh, Zen API for, for Wizzy. It's in Wizzy, but we had to remove it because there were some RC bugs. Uh, it didn't support the latest versions of OCaml. And uh, so what happened is that Citrix made the fork of their uh, Red Hat-based uh, Zen API solution. And uh, the, they were not able to continue using their version 2.0 uh, uh, to, to provide uh, Debian support. So then they know it's a, an unfortunate situation. They're working on it. Unfortunately, it's looking like we are going to miss Jesse. So there will not be any Zen API support in Jesse. So no Zen support for OpenStack in Jesse. The second bad news is that uh, it's going to be difficult for for anyone that runs um, SX in, in Wizzy to upgrade to the version which is going to be in, J in Jesse uh, because it's not supported upstream to upgrade from uh, one version and then go f four version up. Uh, so uh, you'll pretty much be will be on your own, and it's not looking like upstream he wants to address that, because everyone in the cloud um, just upgrades from every release every six months. So if you want to do that, I keep uh, on the GPL host repository uh, the all the versions of OpenStack, so you can go from SX, then Grizzly, Havana, Ice House. So you can upgrade from one to the next. That that is still possible. Um, so n no nobody in production would do that, and uh, um, Ubuntu people pretended that they would do the work, but they didn't. So. I mean, you are able to do upgrades from. Um SX to Ice House directly? Not directly, you have to move through, but you can go from... Um, yes, but what has been said at the beginning two years ago was that, was that we could do it, and two years later it's not possible. Well, we've made it so you can bump, you can skip um, H, you can go G to H via the Juju charms, if you use the charms for your upgrade. Okay, okay. Yeah, going from the beginning, there's so much change. Yes, correct. And uh, as well, there's some changes, uh, like if you were using Nova Volume before, now it's Cinder. If you were using Nova Network, now you use Neutron. So anyway, uh, if there are ways to convert your database from one to another, you still have to change project, and then the, the, the upgrade will be complicated anyway. Um, so... Uh, now that was for the bad parts and now for the more interesting things uh, there's new projects that are uh, currently uh, in preparation in, in uh, OpenStack and I packaged 
those who I thought were up to speed. So uh, there's uh, Trove, which is a database as a, as a service. So you, you use uh, an API and then poof, you have a database that you can use. Designate is uh, DNS as a service. And Ironic is the bare metal as a service so that you can provision hardware on demand and then just use the dedicated hardware as if it was a virtual machine. And there's uh, Triple O, which is OpenStack on OpenStack, and Tuscar. So um, all of these projects are very, very new, uh, except Trove, which I think may be in a way production ready. Uh, the, the last three are in current seed and testing, but I'm planning to ask for uh, removal from stable because it's going to be difficult for me to do uh, uh, security support. So if you want to use it now in Jesse, it's possible, but don't expect to find it in Jesse. Um, also, I. If you have a volunteer to keep up the ironic packages, would you keep them? Yes. Okay. But will there be support for three years of security support in Debian? I was asking about the ironic packages. Um, I will see if I can make that happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I also built. Um, like a year ago, a colleague of mine said, okay, why don't you do a script to build Debian, package, Debian images in the cloud? So I started to do that, like, just like that, and then finally it, it, it became OpenStack Debian images, which is a package you can download. Um, so I tried to design it very small so that it's easy to hack. So it's like 400 lines of shell scripts. Uh, which has hooks that you can get into. And then I use that to provide uh, the official demand images on the HP cloud. So uh, these would work on any uh, KVM based uh, OpenStack uh, cloud. Um, so my p plan is also to have it uh, used to f together with the um, uh, CD creation, so that that would be Steve McIntyre. He said to me that he will try to add uh, the call of that OpenStack Debian images script inside the, the process of creating Debian images. So the goal would be to have the QCO image for the cloud released at the same time as the CD images. Uh, so everything works well in that except that there's, uh, in OpenStack you need to log at the same time on the serial console, TTYS0 and the TTY normal physical console. Uh, there's been a bug since 2005 with a patch attached one year later since 2006, enabling uh, logging on both uh, console at the same time. Uh, so. I patched um, Sys5 in it to have BookLogD book support that. So that is currently in SID since four days. <laughs> and uh, with the help of the release team, I hope they will accept that patch. Uh, maybe it will reach uh, with you some sometime. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but I'll try. Um, okay, so new features. Um, Nova has support for uh, RDB, RBD, sorry. <laughs> so uh, RBD is the, is, um, who knows Ceph? Anyone? Okay, there's a few persons. So Ceph is a distributed storage so that you install it on many servers. Then it provides um, object storage and block storage. That's, uh, according to many people, including myself, uh, one of the smartest ways to provide storage for, uh, for the, an OpenStack cloud. Um, so Nova, which is OpenStack Compute, has uh, lost some of the patches that were needed for supporting Ceph. And since Havana, I maintain them on top of the uh, Debian packages for, uh, for Nova. So, uh, this I uh, this is still in in the packages uh, for uh, for Ice House that are currently in in in, in Jesse. Uh, and uh, currently we can we, with Ice House we can stream directly 
uh, from um, self cluster, you can stream directly the image without going through uh, um, cinder volume, so that, that speeds up a lot uh, the access to it. Uh, we have per tenant quota because, like before, we could set up global quota saying that uh, a tenant will have that many instance with that many RAM, etc. So now we have per tenant quota. We have Docker support. Uh, one very nice thing is that we have aggregate filters, meaning that if you have um, this type of compute nodes with that, this type of hardware, this type of SSD or SATA hard drive or whatever, now you can filter and say, I want to run this little machine on that type of compute nodes. Um, so, uh, Yes, so I'm comparing all the, the new features here are from two releases ago, okay? So that's uh, from Grizzly. That, that, that's where, because my last talk was like a year ago, so that's why I'm, it's, it's from that. Um, so in Grizzly we had cells, but they were not really usable. Now it's becoming uh, n nice and useful. So a cell is a uh, group of compute nodes. So that if you have very large deployments with like thousands of nodes, it's now possible to uh, divide them in cells so that you have a distributed workload. Um, Horizon now supports a uh, lot more uh, projects. So it supports heat. Heat is those auto scaling features so that uh, you say, um, when my web server has that, that many amount of requests, then I want to have more virtual machines. So it's, there's many ways to, to, to say, to, to tell when uh, you need more VMs. So it's up to you to do it. So you would you write, write that in a heat template. So Horizon has support for heat, uh, for Stellometer, which does the metering in an OpenStack cloud. Um, there's Trove, which is database as a service that you can also manage in Horizon. And, okay, and on the Neutron side, so Neutron does the network. Uh, there's a lot new, a lot of new features like VPN as a service, firewall as a service, load balancer as a service. So uh, uh, the firewall as a service is not security groups. Okay, it's uh, inside your own uh, little land that you run in the cloud. Load balancer as a service is kind of uh, HA proxy as a service so that you don't have to run HA in your own instance, you would run it on, on, on the cloud itself, it would do that for you. And there's some interesting things that happened uh, in, the, in the network uh, core, I'd say. So uh, a year ago, we, the only solutions we had to provision a cloud without some specific hardware was to use GRE tunnels. So a uh, GRE tunnel is made between all the compute nodes. So like if you have uh, 10 compute nodes, what happens is that you would have a mesh of, of tunnels between all compute nodes. It's uh, quite CPU intensive, and if you have a lot of network activity, then uh, it's, it's kind of uh, hard for the hardware to keep up. So we have a new feature, which is there since the Linux 3.12 and really usable since 3.13 and on, which is VXLAN. So VXLAN is, you take a, a packet and you had a, a roughly 50 byte a header that's supported by, by the kernel itself. And in there you have the, the VLAN information. So, uh, it's quite new in, even in the kernel, and it's really nice because you don't have all the overhead that you would have with GRE tunnel. So uh, there's some. The thing is that your hardware needs to support the size of the packet plus these 50 bytes. So if you use jumbo packets of 9Ks, it has to be 9K plus these 50 bytes. So when you buy some hardware, you have to make sure you have the feature. Um, most uh, recent hardware like Cisco and such have have it. So for uh, Celometer now we have alarming, so that it can tell of uh, issues you have in your own uh, cloud. 
um, Glens has multiple location uh, capabilities for images and it has a cinder back end so that you can store an image on a, on a cinder volume. Uh, another thing is that I worked on the documentation. So what you see in docs.opensac.org is the official documentation plus some patches that I added for OpenStack in Debian. Um, and uh, I don't maintain much the, the wiki, though there may, may be some information you may find interesting over there. Uh, the process in OpenStack is very open, so if you want to contribute to the documentation, I very welcome you to do so. Uh, checking the time, okay. Um, yeah, so I already explained what Ceph is. Uh, so, uh, I, as I said, I continue to um, backport to to take the patches from Dimitri, who, who is in the room, who contributes the backports of the patches for Ceph in Nova. Uh, so it should still be working even though it's not supported upstream. Uh, this year Red Hat bought, bought Intank, so we have a good hope that it's going to be maintained in a much better way, and meaning upstream with some testing in the gate of OpenStack, so that we make sure it's always there in the stable upstream release. Um, so we have already support in DevStack. So DevStack is a huge, uh, not so. How can I put it in the nice words? It's yeah, it's a bit not so clean shell scripts that would set up your OpenStack locally, and it's used by uh, what we call the gate in OpenStack. So the gate will check that um, your patch doesn't break the rest of OpenStack. For development and testing Thank you, yeah, that's, so that's for development and testing. So um, we have now Ceph support in DevStack, which was the first step, so that DevStack is able to deploy Ceph, and the next step is going to be adding uh, Ceph functional testing in DevStack. Once, once we have that, then the world is great, the sun is shining, and Ceph will be supported forever in OpenStack. Uh, and not broken by every second. Yeah, and not broken. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the point. Um, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I should have replaced the uh, interrogation point by your real name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we have solved as well the problem with uh, our BD, uh, um, BD, I do it, support in QMU. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that problem is solved for uh, Jesse. So uh, RBD is, uh, how to say the R? Ray, I can never say, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So hopefully QMU has the support for it in Jesse. Uh, so I've been running uh, the Tempest functional testing in OpenStack uh, for about a year. So I, to prove that the packages are working correctly. Uh, so I'd like to thank a lot all the people from Innovance, especially Emilien, who helped me a lot to do all these testings, and, and others. So. So what we have in Wizzy, in my Wizzy backport repository is tested. I hope to be able to test it for JC before the freeze to make sure that everything's working as expected. It should be roughly the same because it's the same packages. And so I'm not ex I do not expect big surprises. Um, so the security support for SX has been kind of sloppy. I'm really not proud of what I did in Wizzy. Though uh, there were, there's a consensus that it was not really usable for a public cloud provider. And for <coughs> private use, I don't think you were affected uh, by any of the CVEs that were reported. So it's kind of fine, but I don't want this to happen again for the JC release. 
The good news is that uh, Red Hat announced three years support for security of Ice House, so they will produce patches for it. I hope to be able to uh, maintain these in, in for the life of Jesse. Um, but uh, I'm not 100% sure people will use Jesse and Ice House, so it's up to you to tell me if you think you will use that. Uh, so I very much welcome your uh, comments and feedback about it. So if, if everybody tells me, no, it's, I won't use what's in Jesse, I will use the, the latest version of OpenStack all, all the time, then it's not worth the trouble and I, I can ask removal. So y you tell me, okay? Um, so uh, there's a colleague of mine who told me, oh, you did so many Python packaging, so uh, you should share. And and you sh you, mu you must know a lot about it. So uh, the thing is, I don't pr uh, pretend that I do. Uh, I know so much about Python packaging, even if I do a lot. I think that people like uh, Barry or Piotr in this room must know a lot more than I do. But I think we don't do enough um, packaging experience sharing in Debian. And uh, I think it's. Probably one of the things that uh, Debian people are the most interested about, which is why I wanted to, to share to share with you the way I do. So I hope that uh, if you think I'm not doing right, then you tell me. Uh, and if you are doing it another way, which you think is more efficient, then please tell me as well. That, that the goal is to be to have a kind of buff. So um, uh, because I. It's always the same kind of packages that I do. Uh, OpenStack is made 100% of Python. Uh, it's very repetitive, so I try to find ways to automate th that process. 100% of the packages of, of OpenStack are coming from PyPy. It's a requirement. You cannot add a new module if, it do if it's not on PyPy. Uh, so I created a small script, which is called DebPyPy, that Downloads the dope.xml from PyPy, extracts uh, information from it using XPath on the on the command line, and creates a small template for me. Uh, then after I have a bit of manual work, so I have to review the Debian copyright, of course. Make sure that there's uh, build dependencies correct, and dependencies correct. So I do that by grapping the import, basically. And, and and then, because I want to have Python 3 and Sphinx uh, most of the time, but sometimes it's not there, so I just remove it and then manage the, the test suite, and that's about it. So, uh, in roughly about an hour or so, uh, I, can, I can have a Python module uh, package working. So, you, you, can, you can have a look to that script uh, and customize it the, the way you want. Yeah, feel free to stop me anytime. So what's the reason for not doing that work inside the Python modules team? Because I uh, I, I use Git, and up to, up to two days ago we were using SVN. That's why I use a workflow which is different. Okay. And what's the reason for not using the existing Python helpers? I'm not familiar with Python. I use the Python helpers. Okay. Uh, you mean to create the uh, Debian folder? Yeah. Yeah, maybe there's Python stdep um, package which probably does what uh, what uh, you try to accomplish using this uh, dep py py script. It takes uh, a module from pypi and uh, generates Debian directory from it, so it's already there. It must be very similar. Yeah, probably. Just, I just my stuff. You, you know, I, I started to do it like uh, very sloppily, and then it grows, and then, oh, I have a script. It's things like that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, once I have that, I, I use um, the, the Git repository from upstream, uh, which, uh, so uh, I, I download it from GitHub. Like for 95% of the packages I I, pack, I do, it does a, does a GitHub repository. Um, so 
I use the tags from from the packages and then just merge the the tag or that git uh, reference. Uh, so some upstream don't like me to do that because they say that in their process of doing Python uh, setup.py uh, dist, um, they do things which I may miss, uh, which is sometimes right, but most of the time it's not. Uh, to my experience, if there is such a thing, then I can figure it out. Um, the, I like this way because it's very efficient. I don't need to uh, even think about a table. I know it's there. My Jenkins generates it from Git. Um, I don't need to care where to download it because I already have the Git repository which is defined in my Debian rules file. So I just do uh, Debian rules uh, fetch upstream remote and then it fetches it. <coughs> Uh, I don't have any trouble with pristine tar. Uh, I don't have one single branch as well, which is self contains and have everything. So um, I'm aware that upstream may not like it, but I find it so much more efficient that it's very hard for me to do any other type of workflow. I will try though to use what we have decided into the Python team and try to push more, more packages using pristine tar or such in, in the Python team. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so we had the discussion in a place which I can't name about um, uh, the fact that we shouldn't treat the BTS as a to-do list. I have the opposite uh, mindset. So I've... Um, I try to uh, lower the bug count as as much as possible and any way possible. Uh, so like if if uh, because like I have so many packages to maintain. If I don't do that, then there's just too many bugs to to, to care about and uh, uh, it's overflowed and I, I can't manage it. So every two to three weeks, I try to go through all of them and try to close as ma as many as I can. Uh, so in roughly two to three days, I can kill, I don't know, 20 bugs. Uh, so I do, I do some sessions like that, and uh, yeah, for the moment it, it, it worked. I hope I won't ever have too many bugs for so many packages. Uh, so because I, ha I'm, I do maybe uh, five, four or five new packages, Every, uh, new packages in Debian every week or so. Um, I had some. I had to deal with the fact that there's a long waiting time in the new queue. I have no uh, magic solution for that. The only, the only thing you can do is just upload as fast as possible. So in Debian, in uh, OpenStack, there's that requirement repository. So it's uh, I update it often, check that there is new things, and try to be as reactive as possible. Um, so I was also insisted upstream so that they don't add too many new uh, dependencies before just before the the the, the new uh, release. So hopefully I can have them in Debian before uh, before the the next table of OpenStack is out. Uh, the other thing I've been working, uh, what's the same? So I did lots of Python 3 things. Um, there's a consensus in OpenStack that we want to move out of Python 2, but there's some things that are keeping us there, like memkhd, eventlet, and more. Um, hopefully we'll be there in a year or two, having Python 3 only uh, things. Uh, so like the rest of the Python team is doing, I'm trying to add support for Python 3 in all my packages. So hopefully we'll be there for at this point for JC plus one. Um, so um, up to now, on all the packages I maintain, I 
also make them back portable for Wizi. It means I have Python 3.2 uh, uh, to support, which is kind of annoying because uh, there's all this uh, Unicode thing which is not supported in Python 3. Upstream is not interested in Python 3.2 as well, so I'm pretty much on my own. Um, but I still find it more easy to do it like that. So, um, for example, for Python Babel, I added a big patch for 3.2. I'll be very happy to drop it as soon as we have Jesse out. Uh, but that's a quite bad example because most of the time the patches are very, very small. Uh, maybe a year and a half ago I didn't know about Python 3 at all and as I'm doing it and I'm, I, I uh, know more and more about Python 3. I still don't consider myself a Python 3 Python programmer but I know about them. So here's the kind of cool things that you may find in a Python package. So uh, <laughs> Python 2.2.1 I've checked on the internet was released in 2001. And that's still the same kind of things you have to do. So you just remove that, okay. Uh, some things I do in Python packages. Uh, so I find out that uh, to do this way is, is nice because you don't have to deal with the clean target. Uh, and here as well, instead of cleaning the egg, which always will have differences with upstream, is very annoying. So uh, do, doing that is uh, efficient. Like you just add that in the old packages and then you're never bothered. I also disabled some uh, DH, uh, D DH uh, targets to make the package building faster. Uh, yeah, I had to deal with lots of version issues. Uh, Upstream sometimes says, um, okay, th there's a package that needs this version or that version, and I just add the patch upstream. And then they reply to me, yes, but in the requirements.txt we have another version. Why do you want to be compatible with that? So I have to explain, teach them that they are not alone in the distribution, that I'm, I'm, it, their package must integrate with the rest of Debian. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have all, many kinds of reaction, but mostly it went, it went all right as if you take the time to explain to them. Um, one very nice thing that, that happened is that is with Python Migrate. So this was uh, maintained by a Debian developer who decided to stop working on it. It has been taken over by uh, the OpenStack uh, community and um, support for SQL Alchemy uh, 08 and then 09 has been added to it. So that worked uh, quite well for that, for that package. Um, Upstream has been very comprehensive with uh, uh, SQL Alchemy support. So now there is SQL Alchemy 0 0.9 support. We have um, the person who did, uh, who is upstream for SQL Alchemy is now a Red Hat employee and he's, uh, he's doing s stuff specifically to support OpenStack in SQL Alchemy and uh, in Alembic. So uh, the, the future uh, is, is bright. <laughs> Um, and then there's some other issues like uh, Upstream would like to, to use a new version of jQuery which is incompatible with what we have in, in Debian. So uh, they've been very comprehensive too and they stick with the old version so there's going to be a new version for JC plus one I guess. Uh, we are trying to push for Django 1.7 but like with many other packages in, in Debian, there's, there's issues with it. So we'll have, uh, hopefully we will be able to deal with it and have Django 1.7 in, in Debian. Uh, yeah, so 
there's a lot of upstream who like to do vendorizing. So the word vendorizing means, yeah, Barry does like that. Um, yeah, it's this sucks. I agree. <laughs> and uh, so. Vendorizing is a nice way to say I take whichever version of any package and I put it in my source code. Uh, so they embed a lot of uh, other projects in their uh, uh, source code and then just release this way. Uh, if you do apt file search 6.py, you will find many versions of 6 in many packages. So we, s we still have some things to address in, in Debian. Um, and uh, okay, um, explaining to upstream why it's a bad thing to do it but, uh, is kind of hard. They always have some wrong reasons to do it, uh, and it has unpredictable consequences. Uh, I had one with WSGI intercept, which was kind of funny. Um, so uh, first they try to uh, use Mechanize, which is in Debian and has a lot of embedded other project uh, things as well. So I'm not even sure this one should stay in Debian. But that was dealt with and they removed it. And after uh, we had a funny issue with um, request and uh, URL3. So, uh, WSGI Intercept is a software that is there to test uh, requests on the internet when you have no internet, so like to, to do some tests, okay? So it uses requests and requests embeds URL3 in its, in its uh, source code. Yes, Barry? I think we've unvendorized Yes, I'm, I'm going to it. I'm going to it. You will see it's funny. <laughs> uh, so in Debian, I'm because we are smart people, we removed URL3 from requests. This is uh, nice and fine, except that WSGI intercept expected to have the vendorized version of URL3 in requests. And it took a long, long time to find out what was going on. So. It's a problem and we have to convince upstream not to do it because otherwise you will run into all sorts of issues. Uh, yeah, so... I, I do all... What's the time? So I do... Uh, all, all of what I do is, is uh, backported. Uh, I thought about uploading everything to backport and uh, but it's it's kind of complicated so i hope that it's going to be ppa main some somehow uh okay my last last slide and after it's open for questions is how openstack can help debian so we we had talks about ci in in debian uh one of the things we have in OpenStack is that when you send a patch, then you have a batteries of, you have lots of tests that are done, and then after only the patch is sent to uh, to, to upstream. We could reproduce these kind of things with, uh, within uh, Debian, so we'll have a Garrett or another patch review system if you find something better, but I haven't yet. Uh, connected to DGET so that we make sure you have uh, Git support packages and then somebody would send a patch using git review it would be built tested with pew part adequate and so on um, we could even build a reverse build dependencies and things like that add some specific package functional testing then we'd have some review from anyone not only DDs, okay that could say okay this thing is bad this thing is good etc and then, depending on the ACLs we, we would have, I don't want to define them because we could uh, discuss about it later, then somebody could approve that uh, that change on the package. Then the package would be automatic, automatically rebuilt and uploaded to Debian. So where OpenStack could help would be on the build, few parts, adequate tests, and package-specific tests, we could run that on, on a VM, and it could provide an infrastructure. As a more, gen more general um, 
generally speaking, we could provide OpenStack to, to Debian for our own developer use. And that that's it. So, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, great, great talk. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I run into sometimes is our uh, Python packages that are within the OpenStack team, and um, so I joined the OpenStack team, so yes. I could help out with that. But um, it seems like there, it's kind of arbitrary whether some general uh, package is in the OpenStack team or in the uh, Python modules team. And I wonder if we can, maybe not here, but offline have a discussion about how we can you know, not divide and conquer, but work to get work together. Either uh, the two teams work together, if, or the, my my problem was that I wanted to continue my workflow on Git. Yeah. And if that is accepted, I'll move them all to the Python team. Yeah. So now that we can use Git, I know we we have some. There's some differences around exactly the workflow, but uh, okay. For for most Python modules, it doesn't matter much for me if we use Pristintar or something else. What matters is for the bigger projects where you have uh, hundreds and sometimes megabytes of tables and then it becomes problematic. If it's tiny, it's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, regarding your earlier question whether or not we want to keep OpenStack and Debian, I think it would be unanimous, hell yeah, and thanks very <laughs> okay. much for doing that this far and uh, one more question is what do you think about packaging uh, upstream master aka currently Juno for experimental uh, yeah so I have that already nice uh, but it's not uploaded to experimental so uh, I always package the uh, beta releases so I have the latest was uh, B2 so I have a B2 currently on my Jenkins repository. So if you want to use that and give provide feedback, I very welcome you to do so. Mm, yeah, the same question, or well, more or less the same thing he just said with my Debian system administrator's hat on. I would like to eat my uh, our own dog food when installing the OpenStack cluster, which is planned for the development stuff. So I would like to see the packages in Debian Jesse to uh, to have uh, OpenStack packages yeah, okay. in Debian Jesse. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'll do my best then if, if there's at least two presents. <laughs> so you mentioned using Gerrit to review uh, Debian packages. Have you already done that? So I I'm asking because uh, I tried to do that and it was it works, but it's kind of a mess because uh, Gerrit doesn't deal very well with the fact that in Debian we usually maintain packages with many branches. And it's quite easy to get confused in the workflow because you need to validate, uh, to submit commits in a, in a particular order for it not to break. In all Which is why ways. I think it should be connected to dget, because if I'm not mistaken, I never use dget, but as I understand, it uses only a single branch, right? I don't know, I've never used it. I, I, yeah, I use Gerrit with git build package, so... Yeah. Yeah, so Digit would use only one branch if I'm not mistaken, and therefore it would be easier, and then we will have a Git repository for all packages by default. So to clarify, if we do get um, OpenStack in Jesse, it will be Icehouse, not Juno? Yes. Yes, because uh, Juno will be released in October, on the 16th of October, that would give me like 20 days before the freeze, and if I do that, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no comments. And uh, yeah, and also there won't be LTS support for Juno, so uh, I don't want to be on my own for doing the security support. Uh, I hope that on the next uh, summit, uh, on the next OpenStack summit in Paris. We will have a discussion with the security uh, involved people so that instead of giving 15 months of security support, uh, since there are some people interested in doing security support for long term, then we will have integrated security support for Icehouse for like three years. 
So uh, I, I don't know if you'd get that officially approved by the TC, but I think probably there are enough different distros involved yeah. that we, we could find the people to do it. So, so the consensus was nobody's interested in doing it, but this has just changed. <laughs> is there any other question or uh, discussion? Time is over. Okay, perfect then. Just on time. Thank you.